Uh, well, I'm Peter Gregerson, and I run the uh, Genetics Center here at the Feinstein Institute, and I've been interested in the genetics of both lupus and many other forms of autoimmunity for several decades, and uh, we're now in a period where we're doing finding lots of genes, and it's a fantastic time to be trying to apply that knowledge to um, the study of lupus and sisters of lupus patients. And I'm Betty Diamond, and I'm head of the Center for Autoimmune and Musculoskeletal Diseases here at the Feinstein Institute, and we do bench research into uh, autoimmune disease, primarily lupus, but we also do clinical trials, and we're also glad to provide second opinions uh, or information of any sort to any patient with lupus if you just contact us. Lupus is an autoimmune disease, which means that it's um, caused by the immune system recognizing some of the body's own cells and tissues and mounting an immune response to them. So usually we mount an immune response when there's a microbe that has invaded our bodies and we're trying to get rid of it and lupus happens with no microbial invasion, it's as if the body misunderstood some signals and mounted an immune response in the absence of a microbial invader. And lupus can affect every system in the body. It can affect the skin, it can affect the joints, it can affect the kidneys, the brain, the heart, the lungs. And so this um, immune attack uh, can occur in tissues anywhere in the body. Uh, the SISTERS study is uh, a study to try to better understand the events that lead up to developing lupus. So we know that if someone has lupus and they have a sister, the sister is at increased risk for developing lupus herself, although She's, it's still a relatively low risk, maybe a few percent, up to five percent perhaps. Uh, but we also know that many sisters of lupus patients have uh, evidence that their immune system is different. Um, and maybe 20 to 25 percent have obvious evidence that the immune system is different and looks like it might go on to lupus, but never does. And we'd like to understand what the difference is between people, sisters, who go on to lupus and don't go on to lupus because that may give us an insight into how to tweak the immune system a little bit to prevent it from going on to full-blown lupus. We also um, think that this project might help us learn to identify the people who are definitely going to go on to lupus. And if we can identify those people with great assurity, then we can think about very early interventions in lupus. So we could actually intervene in the disease process before there's any tissue damage, any damage in the kidneys or the heart or anywhere else. And that would obviously be a great advantage to uh, patients with lupus. One of the things that we've found a lot of just in the last two or three years uh, are some genes that are predisposing to lupus. Uh, these, are, these tend to be genes that are common in the population, even though lupus itself is quite uncommon, uh, and they have a very modest effect on your increased risk, but there are a lot of these genes, at least 30 or 40, and uh, those genes are telling us things about what is actually different about the immune system uh, in lupus uh, versus people who don't get lupus. Um, one of the systems, for example, that it's pointed out is uh, the importance of uh, some molecules called interferons, which seem to be involved in promoting the inflammation. And that, in fact, has given rise to the idea that maybe we can make drugs that would interfere with interferon to treat the disease. We're still in the early stages of that. Uh, but it does point out how discovering genes, as we have in the last two or three years, can lead to new approaches to both diagnosing the disease and treating it. And 
Lupus, like many other diseases, is going to be an interaction between genes and environment. And one of the environmental um, potential triggers for lupus is low vitamin D. And so we found in the last few years that uh, most people in this country are low in vitamin D and uh, that lupus patients in particular are low in vitamin D, perhaps because we tell lupus patients to stay out of the sun, but we don't actually give them vitamin D supplements as much as we should. And that the lower you are in vitamin D, the more active your lupus seems to be. So this study of the sisters is really designed to look both at environmental triggers for disease and genetic um, uh, components of disease to understand what we might be able to manipulate just by changing people's behaviors and what we would have to manipulate with drugs in order to better treat people with lupus. There's been no new drug approved specifically for lupus in 40 years. On the other hand, some studies in the last several years have told us that um, mycophenolate is a very good drug for lupus and is being used for lupus now commonly. Uh, for people who have some severe manifestations of disease. So while it's not FDA approved, it's been shown to be effective in many clinical trials, and this really just has to do with some of the uh, peculiarities about how the FDA works. There's a new drug that's also just show been shown to be effective in uh, a clinical trial called Benlista, or an antibody to a molecule called Bliss, and that's going up for FDA approval this summer, and that may be the first drug in 40 years to be approved for uh, lupus, but that doesn't mean that we haven't learned how to treat lupus much better, that we don't have a fuller armamentarian armamentarium for drugs of drugs than we had 40 years ago and that lupus patients don't live longer and um, better lives than they used to because even without the approval of new drugs lupus patients do much much better than they used to. CNS lupus is lupus of the brain and uh, as lupus patients live longer than they do, we've discovered that many will go on to develop some uh, cognitive or behavioral problems. Most often, these are problems that only the patient themselves recognizes. So this isn't like dementia. This is like not being able to remember everything you plan to do during the day. So if you write it down, you're okay, and nobody knows there's a problem. Uh, and um, But we've recently discovered that the antibodies that are at the base of really every manifestation of lupus are also involved in the brain disease in lupus. So now we have a handle on trying to think about therapeutics for this aspect of lupus also. We've been very involved in uh, looking at uh, uh, brain disease in lupus because we discovered that some of the antibodies uh, that are in 